So there are many different types of trusts. There's charitable trust. There's testamentary trust. There's uh, grantor trust. There's, uh, there's just so many different kinds. Um, at Wealth Planning Law Group, we are big, big proponents of trusts. And it depends on what the client is trying to achieve as far as, you know, what types of trust we set up. But in fairly simple form, um, a trust really has kind of three different uh, kind of positions. Uh, there's the person that creates the trust, which sometimes is referred to as the grantor or the, or the settlor of the trust. The second position is the trustee. That's the person that kind of manages the assets held by the trust. And then the third grouping is who the beneficiaries are. So it might be your spouse, it might be your kids, it might be, you know, future descendants of your family. And um, in traditional estate planning, a, tr uh, a trust is often used to help control assets. Um, so if you have a minor child, you know, most people don't realize that if you die without a will, this is just one simple example of why a trust can be important, but if you die without a will, <clears throat> your children are going to inherit your assets, and people don't think through the ramifications of that. So if you're a divorced parent right now, and you don't have a will, and you pass away, under Louisiana law, your assets are going to pass to your kids. And if your kids are minors, that means that your ex-spouse is going to control that wealth. For a lot of clients, when I tell them that, they are flabbergasted, they are floored, they, they can't imagine having their ex-spouse do it. Now, some clients have a real good relationship, it's not an issue. But even if the person raising the kids is a good person and wouldn't waste the money, most of our clients feel like, you know, at 18, without a will, the kids come into the money. That can often destroy a young person. Um, I've, I've had friends I've seen this happen to where they inherited money and got into all kinds of trouble and, you know, really sad stuff. You know, again, when you, when you see, when you see, when you think about, you know, in this case it was their grandparents and their grandparents had worked their whole lives to accumulate this wealth. And boy, the, when the grandkids inherited this money, they just blew through it. Within a year, there was nothing left and nothing to show for it. No investments, no assets. They had bought all kinds of crazy stuff. So the whole idea of a trust is that, A, we can manage the money for and the assets for people that, um, you know, aren't mature enough, responsible enough, who might have substance abuse problems, whatever it might be. We can, we can manage this trust for them. Secondly, one of the big things why we love trust so much is that we can structure the trust so that it's asset protected. Um, we've actually now just recently not only, we've always been able to protect uh, people's wealth so that if you either die or while you're alive you gift assets into a trust for the benefit of your kids, then it's out of the donor's estate. So if you've gifted it, and assuming you weren't trying to avoid creditors, uh, when you get it out of your state, it can't be, it can't be seized anymore. And if we put it instead of in the kid's name, we put it into a trust name, now the kid's creditors can't get to it. And then just in the last couple of years, we've actually started also helping clients who want to put assets into a trust to asset protect them, but still have the ability to pull those assets back out into, back into their own name. And now several states uh, have enacted so-called domestic asset protection trust that will allow a client to put assets into a trust, still be a beneficiary of the trust, yet uh, any creditors that come along after the trust has been funded can pretty much be uh, stopped and, and they can't get to these trust assets. So there's many different uses and types of trust. We have some clients that that have special needs children, so we'll set up special needs trusts. We have our, our most basic type of trust is a testamentary trust, a trust inside the will. It doesn't get funded or doesn't come into being until you pass away. We've got clients that set up grantor trusts, which is kind of a tax planning vehicle uh, that can help on the tax side. Um, we set up charitable remainder trusts and lead trusts that have a uh, one component of it is, is a, a, a charitable piece and another, you know, beneficiary of the trust or, or your descendants. So there's all different types of trusts out there and um, with gun trusts. So for our clients that have uh, class three weapons, 
Um, there's some real advantages to setting up these, these gun trusts. So once again, the, the, you know, many, many different types of trusts. And again, you know, one trust doesn't fit every single client. So it's a matter of figuring out what your real needs and goals and concerns and objectives are and then drafting the appropriate trust document to try to accomplish that in the best way possible.